Praise the Lord, saints, and all those who are joining us here at Abundant Love. We thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, we welcome you in the name of the Lord, uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, we have a great Sunday school lesson this morning, following up from last week. Uh, the title of, our, title of our lesson this morning is King Over All Israel. Um, and just to uh, let you get prepared, if you don't have the Sunday school book, we're coming out of 2 Samuel chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. 2 Samuel chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. Um, before we get started, uh, we'll just open up with prayer and uh, we'll also read the, the lesson text and uh, we'll give you just a backdrop over uh, what this lesson is about before we get started. So I'm going to ask Sister Cynthia Franks uh, to start us out in prayer, if you would, please. Yeah. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy toward us. We thank you for waking us up this morning to close our eyes right now with the activities of our hands, God. We ask that you give clarity of the Sunday school lesson. God bless our teacher on this morning. They encourage us hard, God. We pray that you touch us as we go forth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Mother Kyra, if you would, please um, read the lesson text uh, in 2 Samuel. Starting chapter 5. <clears throat> Verse 1. Then came all the tribes of Israel to David unto Hebron and spake, saying, Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. Verse 2. Also in time past, when Saul was king over us, thou wast he that leadest out and broughtest in Israel. And the Lord said to thee, Thou shalt feed my people, Israel, and thou shalt be a captain over Israel. Verse 3, So all the elders of Israel came to the king to Hebron, and King David made a league with them in Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. Verse 4, David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years. Verse 5, and Hebron he reigned over Judah seven years and six months, and in Jerusalem he reigned thirty and three years over all Israel and Judah. Verse 6, and the Lord and the king and his men went to Jerusalem unto the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, which spake unto David, saying, Except thou take away the blind and the lame, Thou shalt not come in hither, thinking David cannot come in hither. Verse 7, Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion, the same is the city of David. Verse 8, And David said on that day, Whosoever getteth up to the gutter and smiteth the Jebusites and the lame and the blind that are hated of David's soul, he shall be chief and captain. Wherefore they said, The blind and the lame shall not come into thy house. Verse 9, So David dwelt in the fort, and called it the city of David. And David built around about from Milo and inward. Verse 10, And David went on and grew great, and the Lord God of hosts was with him. Amen. Thank you, Sister Kyra, for uh, the reading. And thank you, Sister Franks, for our prayer. This uh, lesson is about David becoming king over all of Israel. Uh, just to give a backdrop of uh, what has taken place up to this point. In the kingdom of Israel, uh, David was anointed, we know. First Samuel chapter 16, he was anointed king in, at the house of Jesse. Um, he was anointed king by uh, Samuel. Uh, that's what God instructed um, Samuel to do, to go to the Bethlehem, to the house of, uh, of Jesse and anoint uh, one of his sons. And he wasn't even considered to be king, um, even by his father or the rest of his family. They had him out in the fields tending to the sheep. So I just say that to put emphasis on it, that he was an afterthought, afterthought uh, King David was. Mm -hmm. And he didn't even, most of the time he didn't even think of himself worthy to be king. Um, he was just always so grateful to the Lord. Mm -hmm. So he was anointed at this point to be king. 
And he, he didn't get the big head when he got this appointment. Uh, he just walked where the Lord told him to walk at. Uh, and he did what the Lord told him to do. He didn't say it's all mine at this point in time. Uh, there was a process of him developing. There was a process of him maturing. And then David felt, faced some major adversities even um, to this point in becoming king over all of Israel. Uh, he was rejected many times and by different people. Uh, uh, the, the one to note the most that he was rejected by was uh, Saul. Mm -hmm. Saul, uh, that was uh, his biggest adversary uh, to becoming king and um, to his rightful place in the kingdom. Saul was the king, the king before David and uh, when David was anointed king in Samuel 16, uh, the anointing and the spirit of God had left Saul and God gave him a tormenting spirit. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not ironic that uh, David was actually the one to soothe Saul at, at this time when he would come and play melodies uh, for Saul to calm his spirit. Uh, so at this point in time, Saul is dead. He was killed in battle. We went over that last week. He was killed in battle, uh, and David still had uh, great mercy, and, and, and he had so many kind things to say about Saul because not so much because of Saul, but because his reverence for the Lord and uh, Saul's appointment in the Lord's kingdom. Uh, so David, at this point, Saul is killed. Uh, David, David has been uh, appointed king, but before this, uh, there was still adversity. Uh, David, they, they didn't want David to be king uh, outside of Judah. Right. Outside of Judah, they didn't accept him as king. And it was uh, um, several years before uh, he was king over all of Israel. He was first appointed king over uh, Judah in uh, Hebron. And that was uh, the people that accepted him. That was the tribe he was from. And that's important to note that he's from the uh, tribe of Judah. And Saul was from the tribe of Benjamin. And Saul had a loyal following who loved him and uh, who, who only wanted to serve people who were from uh, his, his, his leadership and, and from his lineage. And so his, his son, well, Abner, after, after uh, King Saul died, Abner appointed his son, I believe uh, it's pronounced Ishbosheth. Ish 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 his son uh, became king, uh, and later Abner actually uh, <laughs> took the, the kingship from him. Uh, and so it was almost like Ishbosheth Ish was a, a puppet. Right. He wasn't the one who was really running the country. It was mm -hmm. truly Abner who was running it. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there was uh, some tension between Ishbosheth and Abner when Ishbosheth accused Abner of sleeping with one of Saul's concubines uh, and Abner was greatly offended. He said, all, all that I have done for your family, your father, all that I have, you know what I'm saying, uh, put my life on the line for, for you guys and this is what you're going to accuse me of. It never stated that he did do it or he did not do it. Uh, it was accusation that Ishbosheth made it. He said, because of this, I'm taking the kingdom from you and we're going we gonna to serve David. And so uh, even this is in chapter, uh, this is in 2 Samuel chapter 3 when it discusses all these things about the confusion uh, uh, between Abner and Ishbosheth. And this is the turning point where uh, Abner went to all the tribal leaders and said, hey, uh, we want to we want to turn and turn it over to King David. Uh, uh, we know that God has truly appointed him. Uh, we've been really stubborn and we have been rebellious of the appointment. We know that was appointed over David. Uh, David, uh, at this point, I don't want to call him flawless, but everything he did, it was successful. It was successful. God was with him mm -hmm. in, in every battle. He took no, you know, no defeats at this point in time. He was winning all his battles. He escaped all his enemies. Yeah. Uh, Saul, his greatest enemy, could not catch him, could not kill him. Uh, David, 
uh, defeated Goliath. Uh, David was a warrior that the people knew about and the people, you know, not only did they fear him, but they honored him. Yeah. But they just didn't want to accept his kingdomship. And we'll get into that, why they rejected him, although they knew his appointment was to be king. Right. His appointment was to be king. And so uh, at this point, Abner took the kingdom back from Ishbosheth, uh, his son, and he got in contact with all the tribal leaders and said, hey, we're getting ready to prepare uh, to give this kingdom and let um, and not left, but we want David to be our king now. We want him to, to, to rule over us now. Uh, we know his, uh, his pedigree. Uh, we know what he's done for us in the past, and we're going to trust in him. And there are some specific points that we want to bring out in the lesson today, I think, that will help our and give insight to our audience and also a greater depth to how how great the Bible is. Amen. I mean, Amen. how great God's word is and uh, why it is truly uh, the living word of God. Why yeah. is it truly the living word of God? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and it amazes me every time you read something and revelation is revealed to you uh, and things that you didn't know before. But, you know, uh, as you grow in this thing, uh, you see how, how good God truly is. Amen. Uh, so, as we get started, uh, and, and we at this point in time, I want to uh, ask the panel, why was David appointed so early? Um, and he probably, it's not specifically stated, but he probably was a teen, I would believe, or, you know, maybe uh, he was he was a young, a young man at this point. Why was he appointed so early, but his kingdomship and his rulership didn't come into effect until so many years later? Uh, and I'll start out with you, Mother Cairo. Why, why do you think this is, and what type of adversities did he face uh, before he became uh, the true king uh, or, or the accepted king by the people? Well, I believe, first of all, he was anointed early because there was a serious charge that God and a, um, a, a an anointing that had been placed on David's life. Um, he was anointed at a young age because I believe God had greatness in store for him and beyond what he could even realize or even know. But he was going to have to be anointed because he had many uh, tasks, he had many um wars and different things that he was going to have to go through, challenges, being hated by your own uh, father-in-law, um, King Samuel. So there were a lot of things that he was going to be faced with. And I believe just even in today's time, God has to equip us and he has to give us a great anointing to be able to accomplish the great challenges that uh, face us in, in being anointed and being chosen. Amen. And I believe that's why... Uh, God anointed him early because he had greatness in store. Amen, amen. I totally agree. And uh, the greatness he had in him and the challenges he faced, that anointing was needed. It was needed. It was needed mm -hmm. because he wouldn't be able to get through all those things uh, on his own. Uh, Sister Franks? Uh, I agree with Mother Kyra. Um, it was God knew the process and the walk that he was going to have to walk. So he anointed him early because I truly believe that when you have a great calling on your life and God anoints you early, he does that for a reason because of the process right. yes. that you're going to have to walk right. through. Mm -hmm. uh, and we see during David's life, there was a great process uh, from uh, him killing lions and bears as a shepherd. Mm -hmm. As a shepherd, this is what he was doing. Um, and he was a, a, a boy when he was doing these type of things. Uh, he was uh, prepared, preparing for the next challenges of, ahead of him. He was anointed. And I never saw David have fear in him. I think uh, when they said he was a man after God's heart, sometimes that confuses people. That People don't understand what that truly means. And if you read the book of Psalms, 
how you see how David truly loved God and after was after God's heart, that truly means that he loved God's word. Amen. He adored God. He, he, he meditated on God's word. He wanted to please God. He wanted to obey the law. Amen. That's truly what that means. That when he says David was a man after God's heart, yeah. he wanted to uh, obey God. Amen. He wanted to please God. He wanted to delight in God's law and his precepts. Right. It says, you know, in Psalms 119, it talks about, you know, uh, how uh, don't let me wander. Don't let me wander from your word. How, how can a, you know, how can a young man please you? And it's by heeding to God's word. It talks about in Psalms 1 and 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel yes. of the ungodly, yes. nor standeth in the way of the sinner, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. All of his poetic um, uh, text that David writes, uh, you see his, his love for God's word. Amen. It talks about God's law so much and how he just wanted to uh, have his law in him and he didn't want to go away from God's law. That's where his heart was at when, he, when we talk about he was, he was a man after God's heart. And David truly had to be a man after God's heart from all the adversity he faced. Um, mm -hmm. yes, when nobody yes. wanted to face the giant, David was up mm -hmm. on the tag. And he didn't think twice. He wanted that battle. And it wasn't he was looking at the size of Goliath. He was looking at the side of the Lord he served. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we see here even the adversities that David faced uh, through this time uh, leading to this point in King Saul uh, and how through all, uh, throughout all this he knew he was supposed to be king but you never heard David say why am I going through all of this for me to be king why am I facing such adversity for me to be king uh, the throne is mine. You, mm -hmm. you didn't hear David, you know, boast like that. This is my throne. You know, you guys are supposed to be serving me because God has already anointed me. He just did what the Lord told him to do. He walked in the, he walked in, 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 in the path that, that was laid out for him. When he had to leave Israel and even stay with the Philistines, he did that. David had many adversities and I just want to talk about Sometimes God has told you something in your journey in life, maybe years ago, but you're going through adversity, you're going through times of, of, of uh, conflict, you're going through uh, times where you think God has left you. Why am I going through all of this? And I, I know for a fact that he's told me these things, but some people give up. Some people give in. Some people don't keep the faith until the end. And we see David has done this. Uh, can we know anyone else in the Bible who was anointed early, but the ministry that God had for them did not come into flourishing? Is there anybody we can recognize just quickly that, we, that, that God had told them and prepared them? It was one God who had, he had to endure a long time, he built a big boat. Yeah. What's his <laughs> <laughs> Well, the big boat gave it away. Right. 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 Noah. Noah. <laughs> Sister Franks, can we just discuss Noah and his faithfulness and the faith that he had to hold on to uh, even in the adversity he faced before he seen uh, the, before he seen what we call uh, what, what we call the tangible things, okay. the tangible things before uh, we see what he was telling us to do was true. Because a lot of times we question God Amen. and we don't want to put the work in beforehand to come into the blessings or even the ministry he has for us. What did Noah do? What did he have to do uh, or, and go through to continue to build something um, that was not apparent to anybody else. He, he just had to go on on the, on the word of the Lord. Right. Uh, I believe um, uh, it's like today. Okay, say um, you tell me uh, in 23 days I'm going to give you a million dollars. And the flesh in me was like, no, I want it now. 
as with Noah, God told him, build a boat. And he didn't tell him all the stuff that was going to come along uh, while he was building the boat. All the Amen. people talking about him and laughing at him and all the trials that he had to go through. But I believe because Noah trusted God, he was able to remain steadfast and do what God called him to do. Amen. 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 Uh, Noah had to be faithful. And he had to know it was God who was speaking to him because it was him and his family building that boat for years. People was coming by mocking him. It hadn't rained. He hadn't seen a drop of rain. But he told him, you need to build this. You need to, you need, you need. He found favor in Noah. He found favor. And when, when nobody else looking and saying, man, this guy is smart. This, you know, what he's doing is, is brilliant. And that's a time in the day we live in right now. Amen. When so many people are turning to their own ideas and their own flesh and not truly, you know, turning to the Lord. Amen. Right. They're not turning to the Lord. They're turning to every other thing to get counsel, to get advice, uh, to, to, to do what they think is, is right in their own mind. Mm -hmm. uh, but no one Noah was a great example of keeping the faith. Yes, mm -hmm. he was. Uh, another one that I want to ask you about, uh, Sister Kyra, is Moses. Mm -hmm. Moses was appointed early before he started to rescue the people. Right. And what were some of the things that Moses had to go through before his ministry started? And for him to go back and rescue the people because he thought he was ready when he killed the man, but he wasn't ready then. Mm -hmm. Well, he went through a lot, as we know, and he was a um, he was a I'm trying to figure out the best word. He was a uh, he was he had great strength. He had um, great favor. He had uh, uh, the type of personality that. He was a people person. Amen. And I think with all those things that were coupled together, it made him for a great leader. Now, he didn't know that he was being prepared for this, for this you know, out of everything that transpired um, to from him being a baby and, and being raised up. And he wasn't even in his own culture or, or what he really was. And just to see how God used him and, and he grew up and, and under tutelage of the king and and learning all of the attributes of the palace and all the above, it just prepared him to, uh, he learned leadership qualities, which was going to be imperative for him to be able to lead the children out of bondage. Amen. And so God equipped him early, Amen. and it was, but it was for such a time when he raised, I mean, not raised him up, but gave him the um, understanding of what his true um, uh, purpose. purpose was. Amen. 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 And you guys gave some great insight. And um, I haven't forgot about the lesson, but I just want to give you guys some references, uh, some biblical references of how God had appointed uh, men and women early Amen. In, in their ministry before they got in their ministry, but he prepped them for the purpose and position that they were going to serve. And we see right here, uh, I was given the backdrop on how David was prepped and he was being uh, positioned in the adversity that he went through served him well because now he, it's the time to perform. Amen. It's, the, it's the time yeah. to lead all of the people. Mm -hmm. And all of those adversities, all of the things that he went through, they prepped him. They got him ready. And when it was time for the people to accept, they accepted him. And so uh, if we read, I'll read uh, verse 2 in 2 second, second Samuel chapter 5. And uh, I just want to, well, actually, I'll start off in one. Then came all the tribes of Israel to David unto Hebron and spake, saying, Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. So at this point, they're saying, We found. Right. We found. Right. You know. Bone of my ball. We've heard that before in Genesis. Mm -hmm. That's just saying we are family. We're one. We're one. We're one. We're together. But before they were separated in the Civil War, they went on for several years because uh, uh, there were loyal people to Saul, mm -hmm. 
and then you had loyal people to David. Mm -hmm. But I said that David grew greater and Saul's loyalty grew weaker. Yes. And so God, is if God be for you, who and what can be against you? God will always prevail. God's plan will always prevail when you are obedient. Mm -hmm. And two reads. Also in time past, when, when Saul was king, was king over us, thou was, thou was he that lead us out of, out and brought us in, in Israel. And the Lord said to thee, thou shalt feed my people Israel, and thou shalt be a captain over Israel. So they reference they referenced David's track record in the past. Mm -hmm. they, they knew that David was great. They knew that they were truly fighting a battle that they were not going to win. They knew that David was a, a good man, a good character, uh, and they knew what he had done before. He brought the, the kingdom of Israel, you know, out of the, the hands of the Philistines before. Mm -hmm. And they said, when it says, thou shalt feed my people Israel, and thou shalt be captain over Israel, what does that term feed specifically mean, Sister Franks? What, what, what does that term, does that mean literally feed my people with food, or does that mean, you know, feed my people with something else? What does that term mean when it says, thou shalt feed my people Israel? Um, I believe that means um, shepherd. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Shepherd the people. Amen. Uh, that, that's correct. That, 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 that term feed is uh, to govern the people, to lead the people, uh, to instruct the people in the way of, of righteousness and how the God um, has instructed David to lead the people. But he had already had a track record of taking care of the people and serving as a great captain in the army of Israel. Yeah. So it talks about the elders. They all came uh, to King David and he brought and he made a pact with them. He made an allegiance with them. He made a, 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 almost a covenant with them to say, hey, we're together in this now. Right. Everybody was together. And before this, Abner was working behind the scenes. Uh, and he went and talked to the leaders even before they came to this place right now. Abner, he was uh, the, the, uh, the army leader for Saul and, 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 and Israel before uh, before David had taken over. And Joab was the army leader for King David. And we talk about the time, and we're going to discuss the age uh, of David. He was 30 years old when he began to reign. Mm -hmm. And he reigned for 40 years. Yes. So he reigned for 40 years, and that was in total. Mm -hmm. His first seven years were he just reigned over Judah. Mm -hmm. He reigned over Judah and he uh, his uh, capital was Hebron. He or Hebron. Hebron. And then he reigned over all of Israel for 33 years. And during this seven year period uh, we talked about the civil war. I just want to hit on that again because I just want to make it clear to the readers, how can he reign over Judah for seven years? And then he, Judah is a tribe out of uh, one of the tribes from all the tribes of Israel. Why was he able to reign over one territory for seven years just by himself and not over all of Israel? Why, why, why was this, Sister Kyra? Why, why can we describe to the readers and just give them clarity why was he able to reign over Judah for seven years? Uh, and why wasn't he reigning over the whole Israel for those seven years? Because uh, the one he was reigning over are the ones that accepted him. All right. They, uh, they knew that he was God's chosen. They knew his track. Well, everyone knew his track record. They knew what he had done, what God had uh, allowed him to uh, be uh, over as far as everything that he did, mm -hmm. the good works that he did for the Lord. Everybody knew that, but there were just some who were not really wanting to accept him to be king. Amen. And so I believe that's why, because there were ones that had said, We want you to be king over us and reign over us, but the others are like, I, 
I don't think so, not just yet. Right. And um, I do believe in some aspects, they knew, but they were fighting against it. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Uh, Sister Frank, did you have anything to add to that? Okay. Uh, what this made me think about was, he reigned over just one portion of the whole uh, kingdom of Israel. Uh, he reigned over this portion for seven years. And it made me think about slavery. Yeah. How the northern or, 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 or the union, you know, we were, you were free. You were free. Mm -hmm. But the south, they, did not, they didn't want to accept it. They didn't want to accept it for years. They didn't want to accept it for years until there was a civil war. Right. And that war, that defeat that the, that the North had over the South, that made them accept it. Although they knew slavery was wrong. They knew that it was going to come to an end. But they were just fighting, you know, a battle just out of pride. They were fighting mm -hmm. a battle out of, you know, a, a stubbornness and Stubborn. rebellion. Amen. And that's exactly what this was. The, the, the rest of Israel were fighting a battle out of stubbornness and rebellion. They knew even before, um, when you look at 2 Samuel chapter 3, when Abner said, when they got into their own conflict, he said, I'm going to turn to David. That's what Abner told Ishmael said, I'm turning to David. Right. Since you're going to accuse me of this. I was thinking, how, how easy is that for you just to turn that quick mm -hmm. after you have internal conflict? Mm -hmm. See, this, 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 this would solidify that Abner knew all along and all well that, that the kingdom was to be for David. He knew it. He knew it. He knew it. And, and what they were fighting for was senseless. But uh, I think it was a, pur a, sur a purpose served because David had, his supremacy had to reign and it be shown because he was fighting over all, fighting all of Israel and he defeated them. That showed his supremacy and that God was with him. He was just one tribe and he was fighting 11 other tribes. He was fighting against 11 other tribes and he was able to defeat them and break them down and they were, at the end, they submitted to him and they said, we do want you to be, be our king and they gave reasons why uh, with this text. And as we move on in the text, we see, and the king and his men went to Jerusalem unto the Jebusite. So at this point, uh, they had submitted, they made a pact that David was going to be king. Right. And so we're moving on to the next section of uh, Hebron was the capital, but God had much the influence on David's heart that, hey, I want a new capital for all of Israel. I want to, because at this point, Jerusalem was not associated with any of the tribes because the Jebusites still reigned right. in that city. They were not able to drive these people out. And if we go back to Deuteronomy, you don't have to go, but you can reference this in De Deuteronomy. Uh, I believe it's Seven, Deuteronomy 7, it talks about when, when the, no, I'm sorry, it's Joshua 7, when, when he talks about driving all the people out of the land. Mm -hmm. God was adamant about driving all of the Canaanites out of the land. And the purpose for that was so they wouldn't be influenced by the pagan gods. That's why he wanted all the foreign people to be driven out because they didn't serve him and they, did, they didn't serve the true and living God. And God did not want that influence on his people. Mm -hmm. That's why God is still telling us today, uh, love not the world, neither the things in the world. Amen. Because if the love of the world is in you, the love of the Father cannot be in you and you can't inherit the kingdom of God with a heart that does not serve him. Uh, that's just a side note. But, but that's why he told them, and he, he must have influenced uh, David to, to make Jerusalem, uh, Jerusalem the capital. But right now, the Jebusites were the, one, the inhabitants of this place. And David said, we're going to take them out. Now, it's not a fact, but it is indicated in the scripture that Jerusalem was on a hill. It's uh, 
it's, it's on a hill and it sits high. And that may have been the reason. Many theologians say that's the reason why it was hard to drive them out because they had the vantage point and were always looking down at their enemies. Uh, you know what? I believe it is a fact uh, because many times in scripture it says we're going up on a hill in Jerusalem. Uh, so you can use all the, the text to, to declare that that, that that is a true statement. Uh, and so we see here that they mock David. They mock David. Why do you think they mock David and said, even the blind can defend this city? You're not going to get in here. I believe that um, it's with anything else when um, people are intimidated. Uh, they try to make you, they try to intimidate you to make themselves look good like they know what, you, what they're talking about and you don't know what they're talking about. Okay. So it's to make him look like Oh, well, you know, we know such, such, so, so, he knows such, such, so, so, but we know such, such, so, 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 it's always that one up. Okay. I wish I had that one up. So, let me follow up with this question. Do you think that they were putting their trust and what, because um, we're going to get into what a Milo is. Do you think they were putting their trust uh, in the security that they felt they had on the hill? Or do you feel like uh, they were just mocking him uh, because... Uh, they truly knew that they were going to defeat it, or do you think they truly did think that they could not be defeated because of the vantage point that they had? Uh, I feel like they felt like they could be defeated because of the advantage point, the, you know, the advantage that they had. But um, as we all know, it doesn't matter what it looks like. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, because it, whatever God says is going to be, it's going to be bottom line. Amen. Ah. Uh, because I'm, I'm going to read the, 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 uh, the text. It says, And the king and his men went to Jerusalem unto the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land which spake unto David, saying, This is what they said to him, Except thou take away blind, the, the blind and the lame, thou shalt not come in hither, thinking David could not come in hither. So they said, The blind can protect this city. Yeah. You can't come in here. Mm -hmm. And they were put in their trust and what they thought was their advantage. They, right. they thought they had a fortified city. They had a, they were they were on a hilltop, and they thought that there's no way that you can come and take over us. We'll be able to pick you off because we're high and we can see you and we can defeat you. There's no way you have no security. We have all the security. Right. Right. So they were put in their trust and what they thought was their size, their vantage point, mm -hmm. and what they thought that was their strength. But they didn't know about the Almighty God that David served. And this is what David said. Nevertheless, nevertheless, David, he did not care what the circumstances looked like. And it wasn't him. It was his true trust in God. Right, right. It was his true trust in uh, what he saw God as. He saw God as the Almighty, that God could not be defeated. And if, if he be for me, I know that I can win. Mm -hmm. So he said in 7, he says, nevertheless, David took stronghold of Zion, the same as the city of David. Uh, and so we go on and eight. And David said on that day, whosoever did it of the gutter and smite the Jebusites, the lame and the blind that are hated of David's soul, he shall be chief and captain. Wherefore they said, the blind and the lame shall not come in the house. So it has an, int an interesting term. It says, He that getteth up to the gutter and smiteth the Jebusites. This, this gutter, what was this gutter in reference to? And why do you think uh, he, he even referenced the gutter? Was this the only point that, that you could kind of get into this, uh, this, this city that was um, centered on a hill? Uh, was this a weak point? In, in the enemy's armor, what, what did this, this this gutter emphasize, and or what did it describe? It was a water shaft. It was okay. It was a water shaft, right? Uh -huh. And it um, it indicated in the lesson that um, whoever got to the gutter or the water shaft first would be made commander. Amen. And so that was the way to get um, to be able to to conquer everything was to be able to get to that water shaft. Amen. And that's um, and Joab was the one that reached that water shaft first. It was like a competition mm -hmm. of what uh, David said. Mm -hmm. Whoever gets to it first is going to um, 
you're going to uh, be the commander. And right. so that right. was a way to get to it. Amen. So that water shaft, that was that was uh, the point to infiltrate that city. Mm -hmm. That that was the point of weakness in that city. That's right. uh, that was mm -hmm. the point uh, that they could intercede uh, in that place and begin to weaken the defense of the Jebusites uh, in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And David just gave great insight. I mean, uh, incentive, I'm sorry. David gave incentive to say, hey, who gets here first? <laughs> there's a reward that waits for you. That's right. And they did this time, uh, time and time again. Back in these days, they gave incentive to warriors. Uh, the incentive that, that, that uh, David received to um, marry his wife, Michael, was he had to have a hundred, he had to defeat a hundred Philistines. And so they would give incentives like this uh, in the Old Testament. So so I know somebody's questioning, you know, <laughs> was this a trick to, you know, well, was this a trick to to uh, risk your life? No, they, they, these warriors back then, this was great incentive. And to be commander over the whole army of is Israel, yeah, people would die for this opportunity. Right, right. People would die. And, and if you look at that in reference to today, it says a man who win his souls, he's a wise. Right. He's wise. He's wise, those who win souls. And God gives us that incentive right now to win souls. That's the comparison I make, I make that to because we're no longer you know, fighting wars uh, that are so much in flesh and, flesh and blood to, to win uh, the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. But it's about winning souls now. Amen. As we go on to chapter, I mean, verse 9 says, So David dwelt in the fort. And he called it the city of David. So they had conquered it now. Mm -hmm. They had conquered the city. David, you know, he went on uh, even in, in, in um, uh, overwhelming circumstances and odds against him. He went on and they won the city. And David built roundabout from Milo and inward. Um, that word Milo, that is a, a, a term that probably has... Um, had many people thinking, what exactly is a Milo? What 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 what, what, is, what is that? Uh, and as I looked that up in the the Hebrew term and tried to get reference from the Hebrew uh, dictionary, and uh, it, it's what they call a, a rant part, mm -hmm. and, and specifically. That is just a, a wall or some type of uh, defense made out of stone or uh, made from stone or some type of uh, barrier uh, from concrete uh, that they built up to defend themselves from enemies attack. And so what David did, and this is uh, the first time that Milo is referenced, but it's referenced a couple times uh, in the Bible as well. And that Milo is simply saying that he built outward from that 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 wall that was furthest away from the city inward. So he secured the, the outermost part of the city first, and then he secured it to the inward part of the city. And this was uh, to defend from the attacks of the enemy that enemy that would come later. Uh, is there anything you guys would want to add to what Milo was or the significance of the word? And why David did this? He built from the Milo and inward. Why, why do you, was, was there any significance from him building out to end? I believe that um, by building from out to end, that gave him the, the, security, <clears throat> the security of having that already taken care of. Okay. So that by the time he get in, he already know he can do what he get, you know, need to do because that uh, part out there is already taken care of. Amen. Amen. I agree. All right, so mm -hmm. to bring more emphasis on it, it would be silly to build inward, outward in a physical uh, stratosphere. Uh, we're not talking about the heart here. We're talking about a, a, a true 
uh, vantage point that, they, that mm -hmm. David knew that he had to build up and secure the city. It was to, to put a wall on the outside so that the enemy could not get as close to him. Um, and it, just to give reference, it's like you putting a fence up around your house. Mm -hmm. You put a fence up, that's the furthest barrier. It would be senseless uh, to build a strong door on your house and that's the only thing they have to break through to get to you. Mm -hmm. So let's give uh, so let's give uh, the enemy uh, time where he has to use so I can get ready and prepare when I see him coming. Mm -hmm. And as we end the lesson, we see how God was with David. Uh, and, 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 and 10, it reads, And David went on, and he grew great, and the Lord of God of hosts was with him. David continued to grow great. Mm -hmm. uh, David continued to gain favor with the people. And this was no coincidence, but the, why do you think that this solidified God truly being with him, this, this, this um, text and verse 10. What exactly um, did that mean that it said when it talks about David grew get great and the Lord of God of hosts was with him? What specifically does that mean? That means because of his obedience to God and him being surrendered to whatever God had, whatever task, David went up against, he was successful. And he was successful not because of him own self, but because the Lord God of hosts was with him. He was prepared and equipped early. He learned, I you know some people call it the tricks of the trade, but he learned well. And he learned quickly how to depend and how to listen to God. And therefore he had that boldness to be able to go out, you know, even in fighting Goliath. He, you know, no second guess, we're going to go and pursue, you know, and so I think the reason why he grew greater is because things that David had accomplished was, and especially with him doing it in, um, doing it God's way, there was a greater anointing that was placed on his life, Amen. and I believe that when there is a greater anointing on your life, things flourish. You are prosperous mm -hmm. because you have been obedient to what God has commanded you to do. And so the only thing that happens is that you grow greater. Amen. And that's what happened in this story. Amen. Um, Sister Franks? Um, I, I believe he grew great. And I, you know, as the Kyra said, uh, what came to me is obedience is the key. Amen. Amen. And um, a lot of times um, we know what God has said and um, sometimes people allow fear to get in the way. Mm -hmm. But if you remember that if you do it, like she said, do it God's way and obedience is the key, you can get through it. Amen. 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 And that's ironic because Samuel was the opposite. Mm -hmm. I mean, not Samuel, but some sort of Saul. Saul was the opposite. Uh, Samuel had to tell them, don't you know that obedience is better than sacrifice? That's what he specifically told Saul. And we see the opposite taking place now, that King David was obedient to the Lord. And he grew in great, not, not, not only uh, great with the people, he grew great with the Lord. Amen. He grew great with the Lord, and it talks about David. Only, it talks about in, in Kings, First Kings, that David's only mistake was Bathsheba. That was his everything else he did in accordance with the will of God. Mm -hmm. He did in accordance to the will of God, and you see, he succeeded. He sought God out, and God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Yes. And David was a uh, a great example of truly having a heart for God. Um, and what I want to leave you guys with is whatever God has told you, whatever he has uh, given you to uh, be destined over, uh, and even when times, and even in, in the faint times, and even in times where the adversity 
you're facing, understand that if you uh, stay faithful to the end, if you stay persistent to the end, if you don't get weary, it says in Galatians, uh, I believe 6, 9, uh, if you, you don't get weary and well-doing, in due season you shall reap if you faint not. And David was able to reap everything God had for him because he was able to remain faithful uh, to the Lord. And he didn't, and, and, and you look throughout David's adversity, he never went with the opinion of others. He always sought out God. He always, he, 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 even when his own men wanted to turn against him because their wives and their children were taken uh, by the Amalekites, he said, Lord, what should I do? Should I, should I, should I go capture them? Mm -hmm. He said, yeah, go capture them and, and, and take it all back. Mm -hmm. He said, go, 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 go after them and get it all back. That's what I loved about David. He didn't, he didn't care about what nobody else thought. Mm -hmm. He just cared about what the Lord thought. Right. And that's what I leave that's you right. with today. Be obedient to God yes. and not obedient to man. Amen. We thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, we're just going to close out with prayer. And uh, we ask you to join us at 11 a.m. for our uh, Sunday morning worship. Uh, we just want to thank you again for um, joining us this morning and uh, enjoying uh, the Sunday school lesson uh, reg regarding David and him uh, truly receiving uh, the kingdomship that was uh, ordained to him long ago. Father, we do thank you, Lord. Uh, we bless you. We honor you. Uh, we give your name glory, Father, uh, for just uh, being in the midst of us this morning. We thank you that we're able, Lord Jesus, uh, to truly worship you, Lord Jesus, out of a pure heart this morning. We ask, Father God, that your word that was discussed this morning uh, will go deep in the hearts, Lord Jesus, of your saints. And those, Father God, who are even questioning if you're faithful, Father God, you are a faithful God, Lord. You are a worthy God, Father. And I pray, Lord, that this word will, Lord Jesus, grab a hold of the hearts, Lord Jesus, or to those who are, Lord Jesus, just holding on to you, Lord Jesus, right now, Father. I pray that you will show yourself strong, Lord. Uh, we pray, Father God, Lord Jesus, that your word will continue to go out, Lord, and do its purposeful work. Uh, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.